Ojavo shalom aleinu, 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 Ojavo shalom aleinu. Wait, hold on one second. We'll sing it in a higher key so everybody can sing along. Ojavo shalom aleinu. Ojavo shalom aleinu. Ojavo shalom aleinu. Ve'akulam. Ojavo shalom aleinu. Ojavo shalom aleinu. Ojavo shalom aleinu. Ve'akulam. Shalom aleinu. Shalom, 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 aleinu v'al kol ha'olam, shalom, shalom. Hashem ozle amo yite, Hashem ozle amo yite, Hashem ozle amo yite, l'amo yite. Hashem ozli amo yite, Hashem ozli amo yite, Hashem ozli amo yite, amo yite. Hashem, hu yivarech et amo v'shalom, shalom, shalom. Hashem, hu yivarech et amo v'shalom, shalom, shalom. everyone thank you so much for coming can I get a round of applause for everyone here Woo! cheers Woo! nice very nice thank you for returning my enthusiasm I really appreciate it this is great this is gonna help us sing together with one another we'll sing some simple songs we'll sing some uh, some uh, songs that might evoke some interesting uh, spiritual connections with the Rabona Shalom with 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 a friend um, but I want to tell you something very important and there are, there are two there are two important messages uh, when we daven uh, and also this was in last week's Parsha as well when we say the Shema right before we go to sleep one of the things that we sing and we say is Hamalach HaGoel Oti Mikol Ra the angel that redeems me from, from all of from, from evil Right? We, we ask that, uh, that, uh, that Hashem protect us, and in a sense, He sends His agents, He sends the angels that surround us and protect us. And in a way, we walk at, we walk at night with a sense of dignity. It now is, is nighttime, the nights are getting longer, and we could tell our children or we could tell people who might be afraid of the dark that when you invoke a relationship with God, you can sometimes feel the presence of the malachim, the presence of the angels around us. So we'll sing Hamalach HaGoel, which is the next song. Sing Hamalach HaGoel, which was one of the, the, the blessings that Yaakov uh, gave to Ephraim and Menasha. And one of the blessings that we sing with our children before we put them to sleep, and we even sing ourselves because we dare to believe and we dare to know that when we serve Hashem, when we have a relationship with the Master of Masters, with the Lord of Hosts, we walk amongst angels. <laughs> Amalach ha-goel oti mikora Yivarech es ha-neorim Vikarev ba-hein sheni Amalach ha-goel oti Amalach ha-goel oti What we're going to do is we're going to sing it slow 
that everybody can learn the words again. Hamalach Hagoelosi. Hamalach the angel Hagoelosi. Me call from all ra evil. Yevarei. He will bless. Hadniyarim. The children. And my name will be called in them. Hamalach Hagoelotzi. Hamalach Hagoelotzi. Mikora Yevarechez Hanayarim. Vikare. On to Vishema Voisa, Vishema Voisa, Nahum Yitzchak, the Jacob, but they will also be called in the name of Abraham. They will also be called in the name of Isaac. And they will they will multiply like the fish in the waters. And these, this is a prayer that parents pray for their children, that God should protect them, and that they should multiply, and they should be successful and fruitful, not just materially, but spiritually as well. <laughs> The 
comment on that song, you know, in life, the things that we ultimately end up going back to are the memories that we have from our childhood. And when I would walk home with my father every Friday night, me and all my other siblings, when we came home and the table was set for Shabbos, the lights, the candles were lit, we would all line up for my father to put his hands on top of our heads and to bless us. And those moments, those moments have stayed with me all my life. And I in turn do that with my children every Friday night. I bless my children. And I can tell you as a, as a, as a parent, I don't think I am more sincere and more heartfelt in any prayer that I make than the prayer that I make for my children. And so it's possible here tonight, as we're singing these songs, to offer a silent prayer to God, asking God to watch over all of our children, all of our families, that Hashem should watch them and should guide them and lead them down the path of our forefathers. To So this song, keep going, this song is a song about giving thanks to Hashem. One of the greatest things that Judaism teaches is the concept of gratitude and thanking Hashem. And the more you thank Hashem, the greater the joy you find in your life. Because you start to remember all the things there is, there are to be happy about, and that's what this song's all about. It is good to give praise to Hashem. To your exalted name. To Kindness. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hashem can be very complicated. It's not like speaking to a, an individual face to face. It's not like speaking to our friends or our husbands or wives, our girlfriends, our boyfriends. It's difficult sometimes to open our hearts and talk to Hashem. And so what Jewish law teaches us is that something that's difficult and takes time to work on requires repetition. We need to go over and over again until we internalize the message. And let me just give you a, a brief example, something that we can, we can understand. When I was under the chuppah, no longer than two and a half years ago, I told Lauren, my wife, that I loved her. And then I said, now, Lauren, darling, since I told you I loved you under the chuppah, in this most intense moment of matrimony, of marriage, I obviously don't need to tell you that I love you ever again. <laughs> I didn't really say that. I, did, I didn't really say that. But if you laugh, then maybe it kind of gives us an idea of how even with one another, we need to tell each other that I love you or you're valuable. You were created in the image of God. You have an infinite amount of self-worth. And we need to hear it over and over again. And so too, we need to tell one another that we love each other, that we value one another over and over and over again. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem
This is not a performance for you. <laughs> this is not. We might be singing in, in very good harmony, and we might be getting into it, but it's not going to be as great as it can be without your participation. The words are, repeat after me, Shema Yisrael. Hashem Elokeinu. Hashem Elokeinu. Hashem Echad. Hashem Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. This is the clarion call of the Jewish people. It is the, the supreme declaration of faith of the Jewish people. And what a beautiful time for all of us to come together here to sing it with one another, to not be ashamed, to, to, to sing out to Hashem, because to Hashem, it doesn't matter if your voice is a bit dry like mine is tonight, maybe it was the coffee. It doesn't matter if you feel like you can carry a tune if you want to sing and you feel the language of the soul, which is music, move you, I invite you to sing. If you, again, insist on not singing, then I invite you to clap, to clap in rhythm, okay? Let's start again. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem I felt that. Thank you. Really, I was really able to draw from it. Thank you so much. I just want to pick up off from what Rabbi Shore was saying about saying I love you. So I got a call. As a rabbi, I get calls from all kinds of people. And this person calls me up and he says, Rabbi, Rabbi, I've decided to stop praying. I said, well, why would you do something like that? And so he says, Rabbi, I'll be honest with you. I get up in the morning, I eat, and then I give God a list of things that I'm asking him for. I don't feel like it. I, I don't feel like just asking and asking. And you know what? I just don't feel it. I don't feel this is proper. So my mother came to the rescue. <laughs> because when I got married, when I got married, my mother told me, she said, Ellie, you need to know that you have to tell your wife you love her 20 times a day. I said, what? And that's what she said. Yes, you have to tell her I love you 20 times a day. I said, why? She said, not because you need to hear it, because she needs to hear it. And what that taught me is that in relationships, it's not always about what you're feeling, but that, that there's another person on the other side of the relationship that needs to hear. And the same thing I told this person is true with our relationship with God. 
Sometimes we're not in the mood of talking to God. But if we're in relationship with Him, He's waiting. He's waiting to hear from us. And we have to talk to Him because He wants to hear from us. And so I think Rabbi Shlomo is 100% correct. That if we want to have this true, vibrant, joyous, meaningful relationship, we've got to repeat over and over again, Hashem, I love you. Hashem, you mean so much to me. Sometimes I feel it, sometimes I don't. But we're in a two-way relationship over here. And so therefore, I'm always going to be talking to you. All right. Okay. Would you like to introduce it now? Okay, go ahead. So, it's really special that we're all here tonight together. And I'm standing. <laughs> You know, as Jews, there are many things that we do together. We come together for classes, for lectures. We come together for prayer services in our synagogues. And one of the things that we come together to do as Jews is we come together to sing. My wife and I got back last night after spending a month in England. And this morning we were sharing with each other what was the highlight of the trip? My wife shared with me that for her, just about the highest, most special moment was last Friday night. We spent Shabbat with the Chabad in Bournemouth and there was very beautiful singing going on together, very informally. The people that came together for the Shabbat meal just came together to sing. And we all probably remember growing up, I remember myself, being at a campfire and sitting around the campfire and singing, those are very, very powerful moments because it brings people together. And we need that. There's a story about a very devout person who was a member of a congregation and he would never miss a service. And then he stopped coming suddenly did not show up anymore. And the preacher was concerned and asked around, maybe this person is ill. And he was told, no, he's not ill, he's fine. He just doesn't feel he needs to come anymore. A little while later, the preacher went to pay this person a visit. And he goes to his home and this man is sitting in his library in front of a roaring fire, in front of the fireplace. And the preacher sits down opposite this man and not a word is spoken. The preacher reaches for a tongs and he takes one burning hot coal out of the fire and he places it to the side. And without saying a word, they watch as the fire continues to burn brightly and strongly. But this one coal that was put to the side all by itself, it starts to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it goes out. The preacher did not say a word. He got up, he put on his coat, and he says to his parishioner, so, will I see you at services next week? And the man looks at him and says, I'll be there. Hine <laughs> matovu Shever Achim Gam Yachad Hine Matov Shever Achim Gam Yachad Hine Matov Shever Achim Gam Yachad Hine Matov Umanai Shever Achim Gam Yachad Matovumanayim, Shevedachim, Gamyachad, 
Time of the Lockerbie bombing um, that was in 88 and I remember I was at my grandmother's house and we were watching the news and my mother she was just crying and crying I couldn't understand why she crying and she was telling me there were Jews on the plane there were Jews on the plane on that Lockerbie on that fateful Pan Am flight and uh, she was crying because of their pain and I think that memory really ingrained within me what it means to feel somebody's pain without ever knowing them. And that's what we're singing about. How beautiful it is when we as brothers can sit together, when we're, we're there for each other, we're part of one whole, we're not, we're not fragmented, but rather we're here as one corporate entity, we're one people, we're one nation. And that's what this song's all about. So I think it deserves another round. Everybody, just close your eyes and really get into this song. <laughs> what other we have all these great songs here okay here we go here's one okay okay let's see S I N I okay S I N I L H A R I N Hard, yeah, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. but singing in a higher key. You have, to, you have to start low, otherwise you won't be able to go high. Right. 
Shem Tov was the founder of uh, the Hasidic movement, and there are many legends about the Baal Shem Tov. 
many people that he's met, many people he's interacted with, lives that he had changed. And this story will illustrate why. And the story will disappoint you because it doesn't have a satisfying ending. But it might help us to better understand the power that the Baal Shem Tov harnessed. So the story goes like this. Are you listening? Mm. Right. One time, Baal Shem Tov was traveling in his horse and buggy. Now the Baal Shem Tov had a, a driver who would control the horses to tell them where to go. Every time the Baal Shem Tov got on his horse and buggy, the driver would ask him where to go. He'd say, Mr. Baal Shem Tov, where do I go? Baal Shem Tov had a very, very interesting answer. Every time the Baal Shem Tov got on his horse and buggy, his driver would say, Mr. Baal Shem Tov, where do I go? And Baal Shem Tov would say the following lines. This is what he would say, listen. He would say, let the horses run. He would say, let the horses run. He would say, let the horses run run where they may let the horses run can you guys sing this with me let the horses run he'd say let the horses run he'd say let the horses run and that would be that would be it that was the only instructions that he would give his driver sounds so strange because he would just tell the driver let the horses run and so the driver would oblige it was the Baal Shem Tov after all and the horses would just gallop he'd whip the horses once the horses would whinny and they would gallop wherever the horses would stop to graze on grass the Baal Shem Tov would say ah here is where I need to be he would jump off his horse and buggy and he would run into the nearest town, and it just so happens that there was someone in distress. And the Baal Shem Tov was there right in time to be the hero of the story. And I'm not going to go into any details about these stories. I'm just telling you the structure of how these Hasidic stories take place. Right? What would the Baal Shem Tov say? He'd say, let the horses run. Let the horses run where they may. Let the horses run. He'd say, let the horses run. And this would repeat itself. Every time the driver would ask Mr. Baal Shem Tov, where are we going today? And the Baal Shem Tov would say, well, let the horses run where they may. Again and again and again. So let me ask you, was there need for a driver? Did the Baal Shem Tov really need a driver? Right. And how about this? Were the horses magical horses? Were the Baal Shem Tov horses imbued with some kind of mystical wisdom that we don't have? And the horses knew exactly where to go? I'm asking you, what do you think? Yes, they, they were? They were? That's one interpretation of the story indeed. I would like to offer a second interpretation. They might have been. But the other interpretation is, no, a horse is a horse, of course, of course. Right? They didn't necessarily know where they were going. But the Baal Shem Tov, he also didn't know where he was going, but he knew that wherever he would end up, there he was. And God was calling him wherever he would find himself. And this was the secret, the source of the Baal Shem Tov's greatness. It was the source of the Baal Shem Tov's power in that he knew that anywhere he walked, he walked with God. And wherever he was, there was a special calling that only he 
could answer. He'd say, anytime the driver would ask him. He needed the driver to ask him this question. The driver is asking us this question. Every single day, the driver is asking, where to? Where are we gonna go? Where to? Where are we gonna go? We'd say, let the horses run. And we'd say, let the horses run where they may. Let the horses run. We'd say, let the horses run where they may. I want to see if you guys got the tune. It goes like this. Let the horses run. Repeat after me. Let the horses run, we'd say. Let the horses run where they may. Let the horses run, we'd say. Let the horses run where they may. Let the horses run, we'd say. Let the horses Run where they may. The shame, Hashem, Elokei Israel. Nini, Nini, Michael, whom is holy, Gabriel. Umil fanayure. I Rabbi, you want to the song? Okay, so this is a song that tells us that no matter where we go, no matter what we do, we're always, we're always accompanied, we're always, always, always walking with protective angels, guardian angels, they come along and protect us. They tell a story about a rabbi who was driving on the highway, he was driving on the 95, and he pulls over, he pulls over in one of these stop-offs over there where they sell coffee, and they sell all these non-kosher sandwiches. He walks in, and he asks them, do you have any orange juice or something? You know, I'm falling asleep at the wheel, I need some help. He sees an Israeli boy, an Israeli boy, standing on the other side of the counter. He says to the Israeli boy, Shalom Aleichem. We all know when Jew, two Jews meet, we say Shalom Aleichem. The Israeli, knowing a little bit of tiktuk, knowing a little bit of grammar, he says, Rabbi, that's not how you should greet me. You should say Shalom Alecha. Peace unto you. Not peace unto you, plural, Aleichem. It should be peace unto you, singular. Shalom Alecha. The Rabbi, without skipping a beat, says, What are you talking about? It says, Ki Hashem commands that His guardian angels should walk with you everywhere you go. And so when I say Shalom Aleichem, I'm not just saying peace unto you. I'm saying peace unto you and all the angels that are with you. The rabbi gets back into his car. And only many, 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 many years later, does he bump into this guy again. And this guy says, Rabbi, ever since that encounter, I could never rest. I wanted to eat a ham sandwich. What about the angels? They're right here with me. And that brought me back. That brought me back. And today I'm a fully observant Jew. And we always need to remember that there are always angels accompanying us wherever we go. We're never alone. I'm a 
Hashem, Elokei Yisrael. In the name of the God of Israel. On my right, Michael. The angel Michael. Yeah. And on my left, I have the angel Gabriel. And in front of me, Uriel, the angel Uriel, the Achorai, and from behind me, Raphael, the angel Raphael. And on my head, over my head, the divine presence of Hashem. There's actually a special. Angels have a specific tafkid, they have a specific job to carry out. And the names of these archangels have a very specific connotation of their job. And we can see by just examining what the names mean. So let's go for the first one. We say it this. B'shem Hashem Elokei Yisrael Invoke God's name, the God of Israel. Mimini, Michael, Umismoli, Gavriel. Michael and Gavriel. We want to our right to be Michael. Michael is like Mikael, who is like God. So Michael represents God's awe. And we want this at our right side. Because we tend to associate our right side with a sense of power and might, right? A sense of awe. I'm a lefty, so it's not a problem for me. Because we ask for another angel to be on our left side. We say, Mimini Michael, Umismoli Gabriel. The smaller side, the left side, usually is the weaker side. But we want that side to be protected. We want that side to be uplifted by God's might. Might in Hebrew is givura. Gavriel is who is mighty like God. So on one side we have God's awe. The expression of God's awe as an angel flying on our right side and helping our weaker side, helping our weaker attributes is Gavriel. God's might supporting us when we feel weak. Ilfanai Uriel Umeachorai Rephael Umilfanai Uriel, which means and before me may Uriel be present. Who's Uriel? What does Uriel sound like? Or or light. We want God's light to shine in front of us, to show us the way in the darkness, in the dark times, as God showed the way with a fiery cloud through the desert, when we were traveling in the desert. Umeachorai Raphael. Afterwards, we want Raphael. Raphael is the angel of Rifua, which means healing. So when we fall back and when we feel damaged, we have the angel of healing to make us feel better, to protect us, and to heal us. We have everything we need surrounding us. The Al Roshi, the Al Roshi, Shekhinas Kel. And above my head, and above my head, and above my head, I want your divine presence. May your divine presence rest over my head. Hashem, Hashem, Elokei Yisrael, Mimini, Michael, Umsmoli, Gavriel, Umilfanai, Uri. Umeachorai Rephael The Al-Roshi The Al-Roshi Shekhinaskel Beshem Hashem Elokei Yisrael Oh, 